Pro Playmakers. These are the skills that separate. Welcome to Playmakers video blog number 10. This is defensive side positioning and defensive leading, which is a little bit of a step from uh, what we talked about last week on risk management for defensemen. So this is a little bit more of a, of a smaller piece of risk management, which is quite a large topic. So I want to break it down into some pieces here to make it a little more clear. So the first topic we're going to talk about is defensive leading which is uh, your use of space as a defenseman, how you can take control of the space instead of being reactive to the forward. The defensive side positioning is really the most important thing here. And what we want to do is make sure you're between the puck and the net all the time. You never want to get caught where you get beat off the wall because it just opens up two-on-one opportunities for the offense. It's always better be a little bit more conservative in your own zone than rush around looking for contacts and getting beat off the wall where now you lose that defensive side positioning. And the next concept that we want to talk about is leading, defensive leading. Leading means I got defensive side positioning here on Brett, but that's not enough. Because right now Brett has two options. He can go this way or he can go that way, but I haven't taken any space away. What's important is I want to lead encourage Brett to go one way or the other. So I might position my stick of my body this way, which would then encourage Brett by giving him the ice this way. So I'm taking this ice away. Brett's job is to read and react where the ice is, so he reads that there's no ice this way, so he moves that way. Now, my job is now to make sure that I still have my body shoulder to shoulder on him. He's facing this way with the puck. I have to make sure my shoulder's square and my stick is here because if I'm back here, he can cut into this space. This is not a strong space for me. So the balance that you have to challenge yourself with is whether or not you can stay on the defensive side, number one, but also be able to lead Brett in the direction you want him to go without giving an angle to go to the net. Very difficult, requires a lot of practice and timing. But if you understand the concept, it make it a lot easier. Let's say Brett has the puck. Brett's got the puck. My first move is to move here. Now I'm going to move here, stick the puck, and discourage the play, him to be able to make the play that way. Once I've established defensive side positioning I have, I'm leading him now with my stick and encouraging him up to go up the boards. I now have to take away any passing options that he may have towards the middle of the ice. So that's where I go stick to stick. To stick and try to encourage Brett then to go back into a smaller amount of ice. So basically what I've done is I tell him, by positioning myself here, I'm saying, there's the ice for you. You can go in that ice. I'm encouraging him to go in that ice. I'm taking this ice away. And as he moves into that ice, I take that ice away to encourage him to go back. Once he goes back, I'm going to turn into my play. That's leading. You can purposely take away one part of the ice to, to force him into an area which he thinks is a bigger area of ice, and then you take that away using your stick and all of his options. The other factor that I haven't talked about regarding defensive side positioning and the idea of leading the attacker into an area where you want him to go is your coach's philosophy on defensive zone coverage. A lot of coaches want the defenseman push the play up the wall towards the blue line. Other coaches may like to have, depending on their system, to push the play all the way down into the small ice below the goal line. You have to read and be able to truly understand what your coach wants and really understand where you're going. Now, if your coach does not have a clear philosophy as to where it is that he wants you to go, then your best move is to try to force the attacker to his backhand. It really limits is his options and his sight. So in this case, Brett's a left-hand shot on his off wing, which is very dangerous when I lead him this way, because now his stick is in the middle of the ice. That's an easy, a, a difficult play for me, and an easier play for him because his shoulders are square and it gives him an opportunity to see the whole ice. However, if I lead him this way, and I go towards him down, now Brett is on his backhand. And when he goes to his backhand, his sight vision, his sight lines are different. It's a lot shorter. 
and he's on his back end and forces him to make a lot tougher play. So that's really important that if you get an opportunity to push someone to their backhand, it's a good idea to do that. But again, you got to make sure that you're in line with your coach's philosophy and defense is all covered. If it's not clear, it may be a good question for you to ask your coach to be a good participant in terms of deep zone coverage and, your, and, and getting him to identify his, his philosophy so that you can be a top performer in your own zone.